I like to be um, I think more people it is. You know what's really great about all these don't have it. Don't really have it. Chef, I'm going to go. Wow, this is actually. What about and Phil? We can start with you, but the most challenging time you've had as a host because all of you are the the public face of your respective programs and for you as host what was the most challenging the most kind of like uh, not really sure that went well I wish I could have done that over it well um, I, I've never really had any moments like where, where I think I want to go back I mean one of the it's not like live TV so right. I mean they can easily cover up my mistakes this last season I actually like when they leave the mistakes in, quite frankly. This last season, we had so many teams arrive at the mat at one time. It's so competitive that I literally lost count. And I told one team that, you know, they were in a certain place, and then um, they weren't. And, and, and I said to them, just leave it in, because I was totally confused in the moment, and the audience got that there was mayhem. Uh, for me, the hardest part is, you know, I, I write uh, the scripts, and so um, sometimes a show will drop out. We shoot 12 shows in 21 days. And this last season we had a show drop out. And so when I really wanted to be sleeping, because we don't get a lot of sleep, I was writing a show as we were flying to this other country. Um, and I find that difficult because, you know, also because I can't get online when I'm on the plane to fact check everything and make sure I'm doing it all right. What do you mean a show drops <coughs> out? I understand what that means. Well, sometimes um, we might be going to a particular country and then there's, po you know, political unrest or uh, it's deemed that it's not safe for us to go somewhere or they don't want us to go for one reason or another. It very rarely happens, um, but in this particular situation, we had something come out, so we have to, and, and by the way, my job in terms of what I have to do in terms of writing the show is a much easier job than collectively everybody having to scramble because there's no time to scout, there's no time to, and thankfully um, we work with an amazing team that can just like pick up and, I, I don't find that so much, uh, I, I kind of like it because everybody's on top of their game and that particular episode was really a good one because sometimes when you try to overproduce things, yeah. it, it doesn't work out as well. It's almost when you're ba your back's to the wall sometimes. Yeah, and, and I bet you work. on your show, mm -hmm. because I mean you do such a great job, I mean making a show, facilitating a show like you do is way more difficult than people realize and sometimes the best stuff will happen out of things that weren't planned, right. weren't discussed, and, and then you get this magic. Yeah. But, but if luck is the residue of design, then with all of our shows, what we are doing is we are creating the opportunity for things to happen. So you've, you make the cake before you go, and then you hope that when you go out and you shoot it, you can put the icing on the cake. Yeah. And, and if you don't get that, if you're trying to make the cake and ice it at the same time mm -hmm. over here, you're, you're done for. Mm -hmm. But as long as you've got a good base and you've done all your work here, then you can be flexible over here to ice the cake. And in this particular situation, we were able to get a great show. And yeah, I, I love it. I mean, to answer your question, because I know it was a long time ago, but <laughs> you, Ukraine, Ukraine, I was in immigration overnight. I couldn't get out and the teams were running to the pit stop and I was stuck there overnight in some room with plastic seats. That was not enjoyable. Right. And the toilet smell. Oh, yeah. And I could only smell people, but I couldn't see them. And I woke up in the morning and there was a huge room of smelly people in the room and they'd been held in there yeah I, yeah I mean b because you're going all over the world are, are there times when you are in situations that just seem kind of like wow I'm not really sure how this is gonna go or here's the thing if you ask most people on the street on the street what's the safest country in the world that's America a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of other more than two dozen other countries around the world that are safer theoretically to be in than America in terms of your chance of being killed so I think what we do is that we say to people, because if you think about it, most times when you see other countries, when most people see other countries around the world, they see it when something's going wrong. Make the assumption that wherever they travel around the world, something is going wrong. Our show allows people to see that there are good things happening around the world and that, you know what, you can get on a plane and you can travel safely. Right, right, right. but there are, there are degrees of danger. Well, we're not going to Afghanistan anytime soon. Or the Ukraine. Or Ukraine right now. Is, uh, we were there season 10. We're not going back right now. Right. Um, but, you know, look, if you want to find some trouble, you could find some trouble here in this country, too. Around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Around the corner. Exactly. 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 Right. RuPaul, any, any moments that uh, have gone in ways that you thought weren't good? 
The hardest part of doing my show is when uh, some real emotional thing happens and I make that ugly cry face, which is very hard to make because my it's, face it is... It is. It's ugly. It's, it's, ugly. Well, it's just you my face is full cry. of Botox. Yeah. And oh, so right, right. It makes it really it's difficult. really hard to cry. I'm crying right now. Oh. <laughs> yes. I started crying the, day, the moment I walked through the doors, <laughs> actually. They took uh, your tear ducts out. They did. <laughs> uh, botched uh, yeah. eyes job. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's, uh, it's, it's hard. It's, you know, I, I like to be in control, and there have been some times when those kids yeah. have revealed something on there. And I'm even gonna, I mean, I don't even want to repeat some of the stuff, but these are people who have been through hell and high water to get to this show. And these are, the, these, these are the people that our culture has shunned and said, you can't do that. I mean, you know, dressing up in girls' clothes if you're a boy is like an act of, of treason in a male-dominated culture. And here we have champions, the best of the best. And so it gets emotional. When they get real, oh, it gets, it's going to get real. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my face may crack and I try to cry and that's difficult. <laughs> right, but, but you don't, the emotion is something that you want, right? I oh, mean, I, I do, just not on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Who cries pretty? Nobody cries pretty. Well, in movies, I've seen people cry, cry pretty. pretty. Who's cried pretty? I mean, who, I'm trying to think of anybody that cries pretty. Oh, who cries beautifully? Yeah. Uh, you know who used to be so cute when she would cry is uh, Meg Ryan. She oh, had a cute yeah. cry. Yeah. I think Jean-Vierre Bujol, or maybe a French, like uh, yeah. Isabelle Huppert, Isabel? maybe she cries beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know that uh, Catherine Deneuve, she smokes beautifully, yeah, but you yeah. can't smoke in movies anymore. Yeah, anymore. No. No, you can't do that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> thank you. What was the question? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> You Difficult ugly? situation. <laughs> yeah. okay. Yes, do you, do you cry ugly? We'll start there, yes. <laughs> I have you ever been tempted to cry on the show? I, I try not to cry, but I have. I have gotten tearful. You know, because it's never easy to tell these people who have given up being with their families, you know, taking leave off work, do not get, I mean, they're just sequestered is the best way to say it. And, and it's is terrible. This is a, a make or break thing. It, well, it's, a, it's not even that. It's like, it's terrible to tell someone to go home when they've tried their best. It never feels good. Even when, you know, even when there's a contestant who's a jerk, you know, when you have to say that to them, it's not easy for me. And I, I don't ever get used to that. I really don't. Because as hard as, I've said this a million times, probably here, mm -hmm. I mean, as hard as Top Chef looks on TV is way harder. Way, way harder in real life and I'm standing there watching it all you know whether it's a quick fire or you know whether they're, they're standing there terrified at what's gonna come out of my mouth and they have no idea when I'm giving the challenge when I'm giving my opinion and when I'm telling someone to go home and when I go into the room and tell them you know who has to come out Sometimes they don't even, they're not even sure if those are the winners or the losers because they're so sleep deprived and they're trying to always see like what is the angle, which is the best strategy. And so when you get into that mind space, it's really hard. And, w and which was the toughest one? What, well, what stands out? You know, I can't think, of, I mean, I can probably think of a few. Off the top of my head, it's not even sending them home. It's when I have to spit. I know it sounds <laughs> Sounds weird, but when I have to spit something out, because because it doesn't taste good. Well, I've only I can count on one hand in all the seasons that I've actually spit something out, and it's usually because something isn't cleaned properly or cooked properly. In one case, it was an artichoke, and it was the beard of the artichoke. In another case, so no case, one can spit pretty. That's yeah, so oh, nobody spits. Well, pretty. you know, I don't know. Do they cut away? Do you go? No, they no. should. Oh, they should. kidding? That's golden. <laughs> like, no, because like I remember, I, you must, I never you forget. You must do it well then. I, I'll never forget. It was Ariane. It was the New York season. She was the pastry chef of a restaurant she and her husband owned together in New Jersey. She couldn't have been nicer. We were filming at Tom's restaurant, and she made this dessert. She made this dessert out of lemon curd. And you know how sometimes you eat a chili and it's so hot, you have, you're just dying, you're dying. There's a nuclear bomb that goes off. This lemon curd was the sweet version of that because it was also so, so sour. And I don't know how, to, it was like napalm in my, <laughs> in my mouth. And she was 
such a nice lady, such a you know sweet woman. And I, I didn't know what, what to do, and I tried, and, and then I was going to gag. So I just, you know. Do you have a spittoon thing? Or no, I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's 17 cameras rolling, and I tried to do it discreetly. And I think my napkin even slid off my lap, so I'm going, I'm asking Donatella, you know, can I, can you slip me your... And I've got this wad of lemon <laughs> pudding. And it's just a horrible moment. I, I, I'm feeling bad mostly because, you know, millions of people are going to see me do that to this woman who has kids, who has a thriving business, whose life it is to make pastry. And you're about to spit it out into a napkin. <laughs>